Thank you so much for talking with us today. And um, congratulations on season two. Are you guys so excited about that? I'm excited as a fan, but are you guys excited as well? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very excited. Very excited too. Of course. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm so, so happy to hear the news yesterday, especially after having gotten to see most of the first season. And I'm already excited to see where things go. And as we've talked a little bit, obviously, I, I am a fan. These are very much beloved books. Anne Rice's work in general, especially Interview with the Vampire, is so loved. And Louis and Lestat are beloved fictional characters. What attracted the two of you to these much-loved iconic characters? Um, I don't know if... I mean, I, was, I had read the books when I was a kid, and I was seven. I mean, I was 13, um, from you know around that age. didn't read all of them. But, you know, when I had read that they were going to make it into a series, I really hoped that I would, you know, have the opportunity to be able to, you know, put myself in the, in the ring for it and, and audition for it. Um, and, and then, you know, having read Roland's script, it was just such a good adaptation. Um, and it had managed to keep all of the essence of those books, um, within it, within that first season, especially. So, yeah, I mean, I was, it was, I don't know if it was attraction or just like, you know, built, incredibly fortunate to have the opportunity to get to do it um yeah I, i'm i'm bought my way bought my way in <laughs> jacob what about you um i came to the books through the show i read i read rollins uh pilot before i read uh interview with the vampire um but i think i was just really struck by as an as a, a chronic overthinker who has bouts of depression and anxiety. Um, Louis, <laughs> enter Louis. <laughs> I think like I, I, I felt really understood by him and um, was excited by the prospect of being able to explore those things in in such beautiful detail. There's something that, that uh, Anne Rice does um, with these vampires that is just, it's about like that, uh, immortal search um for meaning and for for uh what your purpose is on this life and endurance hmm. there seems that <laughs> swimming in my head all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well and and you're absolutely right like and i one of the things i love uh, first of all your louis is fantastic you you bring a level to i, I often talk to some of my friends who like you, Sam, I came to them as a teenager, made some lifelong friends because of the books. And we always talk about how Louis is both relatable and insufferable at the same time. And the the show makes some changes to the books, particularly to Louis, that I think are brilliant because it gives us this new new approach to him. And there's this more there's more to the character, I feel like, with these changes. For you, as a new fan of Rice's work. How do you feel about the shifts in Louis's character and what do you feel it adds to this timeless story? It's interesting because uh, I, I read the first two books before we started shooting. And after we've, after, once we, we wrapped and I started to, I read Queen of the Damned, I read Tale of the Body Thief. And like, I mean, as, like, as we've gone on and Sam and I talk regularly about it, it's it's really strange how the Louis in the books is sort of uh it's very well, it's not strange because Rollins read everything. Yeah. So but like I feel like our Louis kind of is what Louis becomes in the in the books. He's like maybe a little bit more absent um from the from the stories until Prince to, I'm not on Prince to start. Yeah. But um but yeah, I I think that the the similarities are actually more present in the the differences i think a lot mm. of the changes are like circumstantial rather than or or like um what's the word not circumstantial it's like like his business contextual maybe. contextual yeah. yeah yeah um but yeah i i think he's the same guy he just maybe has uh a, a little bit more not to take anything away from the louis of the book but I think he just has a little bit more backbone in our story i think he's he's a little bit more active mm. perhaps he definitely he's responding to to the vampire let's start let's start or the, the you know he's not responding in our show to the to the let's start of the first book mm. Mm. Yeah. that is true and and one of the things that blew me away about this show and and and, and sam 
you brought the Brat Prince to life in a way that I never thought as a Anne Rice fan I would get to see. So my ha- my metaphorical hat is off to <laughs> you. What was your approach to this character? And also, you're absolutely correct, Jacob. Your 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 Louis does give a little bit back to to that to that let's stop. But Sam, how did you approach this character? Because he is again, you have the whole breadth of the story to work with. Hmm. This is such a well-rounded version of Lestat. How did you approach it? Um, well, I, you know, I have to give absolute credit to Roland because he had managed to translate the characters so beautifully and brought in quite early on, like elements where you, where you start to understand him and you understand his actions, you know, and we, and, you know, as fans of the book will know, like he, you know, within the first episode, he's referencing Nikki, he's referencing his mother, he's referencing fighting the wolves. Um, you know, so you, you start to, um, see where he's come from and you, so, so it's easier to, to understand some of the choices that he makes, but, uh, a big thing of it for me was every time I was sort of confused about how I approach a scene, I would just go back to the books, you know, and, and look for similar scenes or, you know, look for, um, references or something that you can, can draw on. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, it was, um, I guess I've been reading for a long time as well. So I, I put a lot of pressure on myself to be able to, um, fulfill my idea of what he was like, um, you know, which can be, a bit stressful at times because you really, you really want to do, do him justice. Um, but yeah. It's, it had to have been so much fun to do though. The most fun. <laughs> it really is the most fun <laughs> thing to do. I can't tell you. It's so, it's so much fun because he is, he's so complicated a character. Um, and it's like a gift. The dialogue that we get to say is extraordinary and it is so, it's so gratifying playing this character and this in this world saying direct Anne Rice lines. It's like incredible because when you read it, it's very different to um, how it sounds in your mouth. I mean, so it sounds in your head to when you have to put it in the words in your mouth and you actually go, holy shit, these people speak like this. I mean, they, you know, because, because they, there's a lot of exclamation points and there's a lot of love, you know, there's a lot of, the very extreme emotions in the book, um, that when you translate it, it has, they, they, they remain extreme, but you also have to put them in, in a, in a sense of reality as well, which is a bit of a, a bit of a minefield to navigate. So it's really, really fun. And the, 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 fangs, <laughs> the fangs are fun and the, you know, the contact lenses are fun and you know, <laughs> everything is great. <laughs> One of the things that. I know that a lot of fans are very excited about is Anne Rice's novels are so queer. There, there's so much queer subtext and undertones, but the books never really put it out there. At long last, we finally get to see this delivered on in the series in a way that is beautiful, complex, not exploitative. This is, this is genuine, but it's within the context of this very complicated, very human relationship among vampires. How important was it for the two of you to get this aspect of the story not only correct, but to tell the full breadth and aspect of this very unique relationship? We like we kind of you kind of can't talk about it without. But for one, I think it's, we have to acknowledge that the books are very queer. The the I, I think that interview with the vampire Louis is. Uh, is not talking about it. Yeah. Like he's sort of, uh, well, at least in terms of Lestat. Until you get to the second half of the book, I think. And then, you know, I, I think by the second half of the book that Louis sort of does start to acknowledge that it was something more, which I think is such a cool. And I, you know, I was, I've been, was reading, um, I was reading Anne Rice last night and she, you know, you know, get to sort of a typical chapter, Anne Rice chapter where she's gone and retells the whole, you know, Chronicles again in one chapter um, from a different character's point of view, or she'll just start talking about the books themselves because obviously they exist as real things in in her universe, um, which gives you the ability to go, well, this person was, this character was seeing it this way at that time. So she can always reevaluate and change her mind on how, how things were perceived. Um, so, yeah, I think the, the relationship, the way that Louis describes it in the beginning is sort of like, is is it is it subtext or is it is he, has he acknowledged it or is he just angry with the way it worked out? 
But I really feel like as we go on, it's the text is is the text. I mean, it's very clear that they're in love and it's mm-hmm. very, you know, if they're in a romantic relationship and I don't think we would be doing the the Anne Rice universe or the, doing the Vampire Chronicles if that wasn't the case. I think it would be something else. And and it, and it would be a waste of time for us too because the, the the fun stuff comes from the complexities of the relationship and the dynamics and and all the detail and nuance that that they have if we're doing a will they won't they or like sort of like subtle glances across the room then then you sort of spend all the time on on that sort of tension rather than the really complicated toxic dynamic that exists between the two of them yeah and then and then also playing that off against that like that tension and that like mm. that kind of the aftermath of some of those fights, it like mm. it suddenly rebuilds this like yeah. sexual and emotional tension. Mm. Like, but yeah, like you said, you get to explore the breadth of a relationship. Mm. Um, yeah. They're 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 each other's endgame, aren't they? In the book, like in, in the book, in the books, they always come home to each other. Yeah. And there's this kind of I think it's telling that that seems to be sort of the denouement or like the end of, mm. of a lot of the novels mm. is is the Louis and Lestat like being petty and in love, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Louis and Lestat being petty and in love is absolutely the perfect way to sum all of that up. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. And on a personal note as a fan, thank you so much for bringing this story to life in a completely new way.